All right, people. Happy New Year. <laughs> Review of the week time. So, let, I got level with you. I'd say 90% of this review of the week is going to be about Fury Usyk. And I say that not because it's the main talking point now. But realistically, like, the week, there's not been an awful lot of boxing news. Because if you think about it like this, right? The fight was so big. The aftermath is going to be so big. Like, for the record, we have Josh Taylor, Jack Cattrall in less than seven days. Less than a week away. And... You have to kind of jog your mind to think, oh crap, yeah, we've Josh Taylor, Jack Cattrall this week. And then the following week, we have the Queensbury Matchroom show. You kind of forget that because everything has been dominated purely by this fight. There's been virtually, like there has been literally no news other than Fury Usek this week. So I'm going to dig deep on box and scene. I'm going to speculate on a few things. I will have a look at the top rank show that was on uh over the weekend as well manuel navarrete took the second loss of his pro career i'll talk about that now in a wee sec we will go through the fury usek card almost in its entirety i didn't see david nyeka i didn't see daniel uh lippens fight i did see isaac low iq he got a unanimous decision we are sorry a points decision when it was a score and referee uh win and that was the kickoff show. So I saw that fight. That was kind of a low IQ has no defense. Like he really, his defense is not great. So as soon as he steps up levels, he is, yeah, I'm not, I'm not expecting much. Now, I saw this fight. And do you know what, right? This fight was more, this was more sad than anything else to watch. Which was Sergei Kovalev versus Robin Safara. It was... It was a sad it was a sad watch, right? Now, Sergei Kovalev as a person is not someone I well, he's not someone I want to associate with, to be honest with you, at all. If you've seen some of the things he said and has done over the years, he doesn't come across a particularly nice person. But him as a fighter, let's not let's look at the fighter. I absolutely adored a prime Sergei Kovalev, who was just absolute like I remember his fight with Cleverly very well. And that was that was some watch. I remember his fight with Hopkins very well. The two fights against Jean Pascal, which were so uncompetitive, Jean Pascal retired to then come back and actually have a good run, which shows just how dominant the champion Sergei Kovalev was in his prime. Him against Stevenson, that would have been epic. And seeing him in there looking a shell of himself, looking fleshy. It just was hard to watch. Getting hit, nearly knocked out in the 10th round. Some referees might have waved it off then and there. It was hard to watch. It really was. Such a great fighter was reduced. I, I bear in mind, right, even if a prime Sergei Kovalev was a light heavyweight, prime Sergei Kovalev, even a cruiserweight, would have absolutely wiped the living floor with this guy, Robin Saffer. Would have wiped the floor with him. Uh, it, it wasn't nice to watch. A fighter who... You see it in their prime, and and you know it's 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 gotta be like watch any sport if you think about it. Imagine, you know, seeing Babe Ruth going back in that Babe Ruth. Like no one obviously would have seen Babe Ruth who's listening to this video alive. Imagine seeing someone like that they just fall from their prime. Must be awful. Someone you 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 watched and enjoy it, but yeah, that was Sergei Kovalev. Mark Chamberlain with a first round knockout win. Very good win. Chamberlain, since he's become one of Turkey Al Sheikh's favourites, just lit a fire under him. Because he's going over to these Saudi shows and he's impressing, impressing, impressing. Got a first round. It was a big shot as well that knocked out Jason Wahab. Great win, you know, on paper. Anyway, was it because he went the distance with Liam Dillon and some people felt that he did enough to nick that. Mark Chamberlain didn't do any of that. Young Moses Atelma. This was a really good performance. I taught in the first round... He came out a little bit a little bit reckless. Now, he wasn't getting caught with Anderton, but he came out a little bit reckless in the first round, smothered his work a little bit, but towards the back end of the round, hurt the opponent there and hurt him noticeably. Hurt him noticeably. Lovely left hand lands in round number two. He goes down, sprawled out on the canvas, a great counter punch, and showing the hand speed again, Moses Helmet is known for. He has a year to break Mike Tyson's record, and he's still talking about it. Listen, if he does it, happy days. It would be some, it would be a feat to see. But, you know, there's no rush on this kid. He's so talented. Good Lord, this kid has talent to burn. 
And I, I just look at him and I think he's only 19 years old. And he has so much talent already. What the hell is he going to be like at 24, 25? He is, li- he is going to be... Think about it like this, right? 10 years from now, he'll only be 29 years old. Heavyweights probably aren't even peaking at 29. <laughs> this guy is... A, it, I can't sing the praises of a Telma enough. But he's got a wise head on young shoulders. It definitely seems that way. Adjik Kabayel, again, I picked against him. And again, he has upset me. Not really. It was a, it was a, well, it wasn't a good fight, but it was a it was a good performance by Ajay Kabayel. Sanchez started the first round quite well, and I was thinking the hand speed was troubling Kabayel a little bit in there. Then he just faded. You know, if you've ever seen Frank Sanchez, officially he's thirty one years old. Yeah. Now Kabayel, I think, is about the same age, but Kabayel does look thirty one years old. To be fair. And he just pressured, 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 and Sanchez wilted. Wilted very quickly. He did appear to have an injured knee, and he was favoring it a little bit. So, mm, I, I would say maybe it wasn't. But you see, at the end of the day, right, these cards, I can understand why an injured fighter would still fight on this card. I'll tell you why. Sanchez probably not made crazy money in his career. He's probably not short of a few, Bob, but he's probably made not crazy money. They pay crazy money on these shows you would go with one arm hanging off if you thought you were getting Saudi money. And I'm sure that's what he did. Jay Pattaya, I know this is not in sequential order, but I want to finish with two best fights on this card. Jay Pattaya, Myris Bredis. Yeah, it was a clear win for Apataya. Bredis claw back some rounds. But yeah, it was, um, it was not a great fight. The first fight was very, very good. This wasn't. It caught fire a little bit late on, but Jay Apataya was in control. He didn't really seem to want to step on the gas. when Bra- See, Bredis early on was really ring You could see the ring rust was there. The timing was all over the place. And he really should have stepped on the gas then. He didn't. He faded a bit down the stretch. And Bredis, that's when he started to come on strong. At 39 years old, there's still loads left in the tank for Bredis. And I will say this now. Still, right now, at right now, 2024, he is Usek's toughest fight. He gave Usek the toughest fight of his career, bar none. I know he's got two split decision wins, but that was the toughest. That was the toughest against Myris Bredis. Now, Joe Cordina took on Anthony Kakache. This was for the IBF World Featherweight title. You know, Kakache is a lad from Belfast, Irish man, and he's had bad luck in his career in a sense of fights have fallen by the wayside. He's not had the most luck. He obviously lost to Martin J. Ward at domestic level seven years ago. And I just looked at Kakache and I thought, you know what? This is a, a world title fight to bow out with. He's 35 years old. I know Joe Cordina is no spring chicken, but Cordina's looked better in his career. You'd never have thought that. Kakache fought like a man possessed in there. Cordina's last two performances haven't set the world alight, but I thought he'd have enough to get through Kakache. The major talking point is going to be when the referee said break and Kakache hit Joe Cordina with a left hook. It did rock him, did scramble a census, and Kakache pushed the action from then on. Dropped Joe Cordina heavily, heavily. You know, when they face plant the canvas, normally that's it. Then and there. Wasn't. Cordina was able to recover, get through the end of the round. But he was really getting battered in there. Like, it was a bit of a pasting, to be honest with you. They showed the footage of Carl Frampton going mental ringside. Well, he was actually in the um, announce booth, but he was going mental. You know, go on, Anto, go on. Sounded like a dub in that. You'd never think he was from Belfast. But, yeah, it was a great performance by Kikache. It was one of those nice stories where you're like, do you know what, I, I'm not really a, a horse in the race. I, I'm indifferent who wins. But for someone who's 35 years old, at super feather of all weights, you think that's, you know, that that's it. To get that world title, fair play. Now, fair play to Kikache. And obviously the main event, Alexander Usek, Tyson Fury. Where do we start with this? Do you know what? I'm not going to start with this. I am going to actually go and I'm going to finish with that fight. And I'm going to talk about the card, the top rank put on over in the States. Now, I only seen highlights of the main event, right? I saw. I did actually see that uh, Richard Torres got a knock I like I'm watching Richard Torres's career eagerly very eagerly but I seen highlights of the Navarrete uh 
Baranchik fight, Dennis Baranchik. I was favouring Navarrete going into the fight. He's more proven. And I just love his style. He's only 29 years old, but he has been slowing down a little bit, like in recent fights. Baranchik wins 36 years old. Again, you know, you see these guys and they are up there in age. I know he fought on one of Fury's undercards, actually. He fought on the uh, Chisora undercard. Fought Anthony Yidget there out in Warsaw, Poland. So he's been on these big cards and now he is champion. You know, there was a lot of talk that Loma would fight the winner of this fight. More so if it was Navarrete. I don't know, is he going to... I'm sure, well, obviously Usyk was watching the fight cheering him on. So I'd say they're mates. So Shakur next anybody for Loma? Shakur next for Branchek either. You know, I'd like to see. The lightweight division is still a very, very good division. Still has some good talent in it. So Tank Davis is obviously floating around. So, yeah. Now, let's... Uh, where do we start with this? Let's talk about Usek Fury, right? So, when I watched it live, my original perspective on this fight was that it was close. It was close and it was competitive. When I rewatched it this morning, and I've had a gander at it again as the day's gone on, 116-111. And personally, I think I'm being quite generous with that scorecard. I think that I'm giving maybe the 11th round to Alexander Usyk, or sorry, to Fury, where I really should be giving it to Usyk. I'm being generous with that scorecard. This was a new Usyk. When you look at it back, you're like, he's not landing. Fury isn't actually landing any of these shots. I can't score these shots to him. Usyk is out landing him. Usyk's out working him. Usyk's setting the tempo. All Fury was doing for the first four rounds was show, or for the first three rounds, it was showboating. Usyk swept those rounds. I mean, there's no real question you could give all those rounds to Alexander Usyk. Certainly the first and second, you could maybe make an argument the third round, but I didn't. And then Fury has his purple patch, and it's gone in the seventh. You know, I gave Usyk the seventh. The eighth round was a big Usyk round. That's when he busted Fury's nose up. And he really, it, it was like that moment when that nose got busted. It was just like, I'm done. This like switch went off in Fury's head, and it went on in Usyk's head that it was like, right, I'm in this fight now. And then obviously round nine, you know, when I watch that again, every time I watch that round nine back, I'm like, Fury is so badly hurt. I've never seen him like that. He's normally someone who, is. it's not even that he's really necessarily hurt standing. He normally just goes down. Like when you hit him, it's just he's down, but he's up. You know what sort of way? You're not used to seeing him just staggering all over the place, you know, doing the Amir Khan dance. You're not, you're just not used to seeing that. And had the referee not jumped in at that moment, Usyk would have landed that left hand, it would have been over. It would have been talking about a knockout win for Alexander Usyk. He wouldn't even be talking about a split decision win. Questions got... I will say this again, right? That referee, what was his name? Mark Nelson. Mark Nelson did a pathetic job refereeing that fight. Absolutely pathetic. And I was worried because people were saying he was the referee of the Pacquiao Horn fight. And you never know. And I was like, well, look, Louis Pabon was the referee of the klitschko Povetkin fight. And he did a pathetic job in that fight. But he's done a great job in other fights. And he refereed the Usyk uh, Joshua fight, as far as I believe. And he did a great job in it. So you can have a, an off night. But this guy, yeah, I mean, there you go. So that was the fight. You know, I felt that Usyk did win. And Tyson Fury... This, see, this is where we're going like, to... This, this is mainly going to be the kind of Fury-Usyk talk for now. Tyson Fury, after the fight to go and to listen i thought that if fury loses it'll be more so his team someone like john who will john fury we know obviously headbutting that member of the team who said this week john fury's a scumbag there's no ifs or buts he's a scumbag he's simple as right and i thought you know what john fury would be the one you know effing and blind and giving it all that you know you know my son my son with security all over the place so nothing will happen you know but that, i thought that would be john fury if tyson fury loses but i would expect fury to tell his dad to shut up and he will accept the defeat okay we can run it back the better man won on the night well done we go home to our families and that's the end of it i was not and, and believe me there's not a lot that i wouldn't expect from tyson fury at this point but to go as far as insinuating the conflict in Usyk's home country is the reason he got the decision. That right there is just such a scummy, disrespectful, low thing to do. It was awful. It really was. When I heard that, I just my stomach turned. I was like, you really are something else. As a fighter, Tyson Fury, in that ring, 
is a great fighter. He's a great fighter. He may be one of the best fighters. Well, he is one of the best fighters of this generation. He's not the best, but he's one of the best. But when you look at him and you say, of his dimensions, he may be the best fighter of his dimensions. A six foot, a plus six foot six fighter to move like that, certainly in his prime, is tremendously talented. And I think that if we were talking about peak fury, which realistically I think his best performance was Wilder 2, but peak fury was 2014, 2015. If we took that fury, I think he beat Dusek nine times out of 10. And for someone as talented as that to behave the way he does, it's just, no, no. And I've done a video already talking about it, but he has nothing but contempt for the fans. The whole Fury team, well, no, sorry, not the whole Fury team, forgive me for that one. John Fury, the likes of Tommy Fury, Tyson, obviously, they have nothing but contempt for the fans. Peter Fury has a lot more integrity, and he is the one member, Huey as well, and Shane to an extent, that I could look at and I could say, do you know what? I don't agree with a lot of the things that certainly Tyson comes out with, but you do speak a lot of sense. And Peter Fury is the man. I mean, ever two brothers, they are so different. Peter and John, it is chalk and cheese. They're so, they're the polar opposite of one another. Peter Fury is a man. Where if I was in a bar with Peter Fury, I would happily say, can I buy you a pint? What are you drinking? Can I buy you a drink? And if he wanted to talk box, I'd be more than happy. John Fury, I wouldn't even acknowledge him. I'd just be like, oh God, I'm going the other way. You know that? Because John Fury is what he is. Peter Fury, I've so much time for. And I do genuinely think if he'd have been in Team Fury and stuck around, things would have been a little bit different. I'm not saying Tyson would have won, but I think his behavior, everything would have been different. Now, Sugar Hill is not a bad trainer. And I want to point out that in that fight, Sugar Hill Stewart, I seen a replay, I forget what round it was, but Sugar Hill is giving Fury instructions. And he's, you know, giving it that, giving Fury the instructions, good instructions, mind you. Tyson has John Fury in one ear, he's Andy Lee in the other ear telling him he's winning, and you've Sugar Hill speaking with her, and you're just like, why? Why do you have all those voices in the corner? And someone in the live I did said, do you think that Tyson Fury, or sorry, Sugar Hill Stewart may leave Team Fury? Maybe, because he is cut from the same breed as Peter Fury. That same mold, I should say. He takes no you-know-what. Does Sugar Hill Stewart. Doesn't take any of that. So yeah. I wouldn't rule that out, but the whole Fury situation over the last couple of years has just been one thing after another. You know, I've already done a video talking about it, but you go back 2018, he could have signed with her and fought Joshua, he chose the path of least resistance. He could have fought Dylan White in 2019, he made a demand it was met, he didn't fight him. He could he teased everyone with the Joshua undisputed fight in 2021, knowing damn well the court were gonna rule in Deontay Wilder's favor, we didn't get that. He messed all his Andrew Usyk around for two flipping years. just why and it backfired spectacularly so this is probably one of the most satisfying l's you'll ever see in the sport of boxing and it seems almost like the whole boxing world has woke up the next day the morning after that fight and was like yep yep it happened and Usyk was the rightful winner he absolutely was he was the rightful winner and whatever he does listen if i was him and I was in his team, I'd be saying, leave on a high. That head can't go any higher. Leave on a high. Bow out. Spend time with your family. He's got a newborn, I think his daughter he had there back in February, January or February. He's a newborn daughter. I think he's got at least, I know he's got one son and a daughter who gave him ER the teddy bear. Or the teddy bear, I don't think he's a bear. But, you know, the cuddly toy that he brings to fight, which I think is just sweet. It's really nice that he does that and i'm sure he's got at least one other son so spend time with your wife and family he likes to play football he wants to i think he's played in the ukrainian league as well so they're in a low league be like playing national league you know in, in the uk and if even maybe because they're still they're still better than the league of ireland <laughs> you could be playing non-league football in the uk in the national league and you're probably on par with league of ireland maybe even a bit maybe actually probably a level above seriously that's how bad it's so defensive the football over here it's awful it's really bad but obviously ringside was anthony joshua now he's obviously fighting in september in wembley stadium and to be honest with you although the fight now it would not be for undisputed it would not it wouldn't be for anything really well maybe if joshua picks up a title it will be 
but I still think it's a massive fight. Could we potentially still see Joshua versus Fury? I know it's not going to be for the same. It's not going to be the same. It's not going to have the same allure because both well, jo Joshua was obviously not undefeated. Tyson Fury was, and he was champion. It won't have the same allure, but w people will still tune in. Now, apparently, Tyson Fury is invoking the rematch clause. Um, sorry, T Tyson Fury making no immediate decision about the rematch in the post fight review or post fight defeat. I don't know what's going to happen next. Paris Fury was also saying that she's not going to watch or go to Tyson's fights anymore. I wouldn't be shocked if Fury calls it a day. To be honest with you, I wouldn't be shocked if either Fury or Usyk call it a day. Alexander Rusek though, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. I can't believe we have an undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. That's just... You know, I've been waiting. I knew it was never going to happen with the Klitschko's. I wasn't doing videos at the time. I knew it was never going to happen with the Klitschko's. I thought it might happen with Wilder Fury. I really did back then. Fury had his problems. Joshua picked up the title. He unified with Parker. We could have got Wilder. We didn't. That was Team Wilder's fault. Then we came... I thought that we might get Ruiz versus Wilder. I would have been happy with that. I thought we were going to get Joshua versus Fury then. We did... I, it was. It's just been on and on and on and on and on. To wait well over a decade. Because it's over a decade since I've been really properly boxing, boxing, boxing. Got a, the people like Hatman and Joe Stunner who've been waiting 25 plus years. I think it's been 25 years there, thereabouts. No, it's, it's just been a little bit less than that, but around about 25 years. God knows how they must be feeling right now to finally be able to say we have an undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. It's just brilliant. It's just brilliant. I love the heavyweight division. I think it's fantastic. Uh, it's always going to be my favorite division and the right guy won. I'd love to hear from the likes of Billy Nelson. Billy Nelson, whenever he talks about Martin Bacoli, Bacoli beats this guy, Bacoli beats that guy, Bacoli beats... He never mentions Tyson Fury. The fact that there's trainers who are fanboys of fighters in their fighters' respective division is a joke. Uh, Billy Nelson, I've never liked the man. I never warmed to Billy Nelson. And I'll tell you why. When Martin Bacoli fought Michael Hunter, that was in the York Hall nearly six years ago now, Michael Hunter was beating up Martin Bacoli in that fight. And Bacoli, I think, suffered an injury to his shoulder. You could see it was a problem and he wanted to quit. Listen, you're getting beat up. You have an injury that's definitely affecting you. No issue. Let the, Save him for another day. My guy's sending him out, not letting him quit. He does not have those fighters' best interest at heart. Any, any corner man who's doing that, if a fighter is injured, he's taking a beat and he wants to quit, you cut those gloves off, you say to the referee, it's not our night, wave it off. You don't send them out to take more abuse. You don't do that. Because that's where, unfortunately, tragedies happen. Something like that. You're not going down, the fighter wants out, you should pull him out. Done. Never. Once I saw that, I was like, do you know what? That's all I need to know about Billy Nelson. I don't need to know any more. That told me everything I need to know about him. Now, let's move on as much as we can. So, as you may remember, the June 15th show, which is actually a good show on paper for Boxer, one of Ben Shalom's, but they, they are getting better. You know, they are getting better as I get a text just there. Sorry about that. But they are getting better. You know, I mean, like a broken clock is right twice a day. So, he is getting better with these shows. Headlined by Reactport versus Bill Smith. Isaac Chamberlain was meant to fight... Seslak, I think there for a sec. Mikhail Seslak for the European title. He will still fight for the European title now against Jack Massey. That's a more, well, I was going to say more competitive. It's not really though, is it? But Jack, no disrespect to Jack Massey. No disrespect intended in the slightest. I would still favour Chamberlain to win. It's still a very, very good card. It's still a very, very, very good card. Now, I seen this, right? And, and I had to double check. The IBF are not mandating the 12 pound rehydration clause for Davis versus Frank Martin. I heard that there was a rumor that they were trying to get that in place for Frank Martin to weigh in. And bear in mind, the IBF have a 10 pound rehydration clause the morning after the weigh in, and they've had that in place for years. But the WBA, I was aware that they, I was aware that they didn't have it. I wasn't aware that they had it, and they don't. I don't like rehydration clause. Period. I don't like them. If you've made the weight, you've made the weight. 
that's when now i know well i suppose rehydration clauses like the morning after it's still the same thing i don't particularly like them if you've made the weight you've made the weight just leave them at it because then you're gonna have you could have some problems then and, and we just don't want that it's, i don't want that it's just as simple as right his Excellency Turkey Al Al Sheikh is named the dream fights he wants to make. Tyson Fury versus Joshua. Doubt he's going to get that now, unfortunately. Uh, you might still, but it's not going to be the same level. Baturbia Bivol versus the winner, sorry, versus ben Benavidez. I'd like to see that fight too. Canelo Crawford, I'd like to see that fight as well. Inoue Davis, not so much. Why does Inoue need to go up, what, three weight divisions to fight Tank Davis? I don't really want to see that fight, to be honest with you. I mean, if a new way agrees to it, then okie dokie. But I don't particularly want to see that fight. His Excellency is all Turkey Al-Sheikh has also said that they're hoping to reschedule the Baturbi F. Bivol fight for December. Six months later. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You know, I was so looking forward to June the 1st. I'm still looking forward to June the 1st. But six flipping months. So wait, 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 hang on a minute. It might be good, actually, because we might get a show before Christmas. Imagine that, the day of reckoning before Christmas. That was brilliant. That was the 23rd of December, just, just, just before Christmas Eve. That was brilliant. That was legit. That was brilliant. Let's do something like that again. So that might actually work out a treat. He's also working on Canelo Crawford for the States early next year. You know, Crawford has to get through Majimov, but um, I want to... You know what? Right? I'm not even going to talk about that. I'm, I'm going to talk about the Saudis influence on boxing right I was watching True Geordie's post fight review on Tyson Fury and he was talking about Aspinall having to defend an interim title in the UFC because John Jones won't fight and I like John Jones I've always been a fan of his outside the ring no but inside the ring yeah or inside the ring the octagon I like John Jones I liked his fights with DC although the last one was tainted we all know why but John Jones yeah I, I always would have loved to have seen him fight Brock Lesnar just because, you know. I like Brock Lesnar when he was in the UFC. When he fought the likes of Frank Mir and he got absolutely annihilated by Keen Velasquez and Alistair Overmark. But outside the ring, yeah, you know what. But he was saying that he has to fight for his interest, he's defend his interim title. That the big fights are not really getting it. UFC 300 was not great on paper. Now, I had some good moments in it, but on paper it was not great. And the UFC fans, the MMA fans have always said, well, boxing doesn't deliver the big fights. Well, it is now. And whether you like it or not, it's being delivered because of the Saudis' influence. I mean, we're hearing these big... If we're hearing of a big fight, if we hear Tank Davis versus Devin Haney, just to give you an example, if we hear that, we'd be like, mm, will it be made? And if we hear Turkey Al Sheikh, we're like, it's getting made. It's getting made. Before, we'd hear that and be like, ha, that's never going to get made. You'd hear about, you know, Crawford Bivol and you're like, or sorry, Crawford Bivol, Jesus, no. But you'd hear about Baturbia Bivol, you're like, that's not going to get made. Fury, you said, you know, it's, it's not going to happen. And now they're happening. And I think we really, truly are coming into an absolute golden age of boxing. An age of boxing that we, I, look, it'll never, nothing lasts forever. And look at history, nothing lasts forever. You know, the ruins in, like, if you look at, like, ruins of castles, the ancient Roman ruins in London, right? You look at some, and, and when I say ancient ruins, they're only, like, slabs of uh, metal, or sl metal, obviously slabs of stone now. But they built them with the intention of them lasting forever. They didn't. All right? Nothing lasts forever. And I know this kind of peak we're having in boxing right now won't last forever. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to enjoy it while we have it. The big fights are happening, they're getting made, and we as boxing fans need to be enjoying it. And I, for one, am loving it. If, if fans come to me and they say, like, you know, wasn't it not better, you know, say seven, eight years ago? Oh, 2016 was a great year in boxing. What did we get that year? Well, we got, we got, we got Canelo Can and Triple G Brook. Why didn't we get Canelo Triple G? That was a horrible year in boxing. The way these last two years, have been night and day better. 2022 was a bit crap, but 2023 and 2024 have been brilliant and they're only gonna get better. And I, for one, am so happy that we're getting these big fights made on a regular basis. We've literally just this year, right? We came into this year off the back of the Day of Reckoning show, which was electric, it was amazing card. 
we have now had right this year so far i know joshua versus nganu on paper it was kind of a bit of a spectacle but you know it was what it was right we've also had ryan garcia versus devin haney we've just had fury you said we will get uh Baturbi at Bivol at some point we have Anthony Joshua against question mark but it's going to be a big name could possibly be against Deontay Wilder if he comes true we've got Crawford versus Israel Majumov we've had Canelo versus uh, Jaime Munguia should have been Benavidez but we've still had Canelo versus Munguia we've had great fights this year and they're only just going to get better and better and better and I am so happy for that you can't not be happy. It's a brilliant time. And the UFC, we, we as boxing fans can finally look at the UFC and be like, oh, you should see box of what we're doing over there. Oh, yeah, user, what happened? You know, you should see what we're doing in the squared circle, you know? And I love UFC. I love MMA. I like mixed martial arts. I like watching it. I'm getting more into it now. I will probably do a review of Conor versus uh, Chandler, you know? I might, might even do to Aspinall's next fight review with that. I love MMA, particularly the UFC. Boxing is my sport, man. Boxing's my sport. Let's have a quick look see on boxing scene before finishing up. Uh, Branchek, it's going to be all Fury, isn't it? It's going to be all Fury, you sec. We've done it to death. Let's uh, Vladimir Klitschko hails undisputed as the best fighter in modern history. Can't really argue with it. Can't really argue with it. Tremendous performance. It's literally, yeah. It, it, okay, so look, it, it's literally all, it's literally all Fury, you sec. So I'm going to end there. Send it on a good note. I hope you all have a great week. It's been a great weekend. It's been just crazy, really. And I will give a shout out. I know it's... Pro I'm going to timestamp it as well, just so I know that I have it there. Because I promised a long-time subscriber of mine that uh, I would give him a shout out. And Luke Watson, all right? Luke Watson doesn't have a YouTube channel where he makes content or anything like that. But I'll read it here. G-Man, please give me a shout out on your next video. Been a fan since day one. Much love. Luke Watson, shout out to you, my friend. Thank you for the support. I really appreciate it. Look, a, a like, a comment, anything. It doesn't matter if you're here for five minutes or you've been here since day one. I appreciate every last one of you. Every last one of you are amazing. You know, every last one of you, 18,577. My mind just blows looking at that number. It's insane. Thank you so much. Shout out to you, Luke. Shout out to everyone. And yeah, if anyone needs a shout out or anything like that, just let me know. If I could read the comment. He was lucky. He was. You got in there early in the, in the video. You were lucky. I might have missed that if I hadn't seen it. But you were lucky with that one. But may all of you, I appreciate every one of you. Don't think I don't. I genuinely do. I genuinely hand on heart do don't get any real sappy but I genuinely hand on heart do it's been a crazy journey and it's only going to get crazier in the next couple of weeks when we relocate um and yeah that's that lads I'll leave it there I hope you all have a great week the phone rings with some good news for somebody myself included I will leave it there for everybody watching leave a like subscribe all that good stuff peace